Hello, my name's Jim Friend, and today we're gonna to be making these 3D rotating cogs in After Effects and Cinema 4D light that comes with it. If you're new to 3D and you wanna start learning some of the fundamentals, I've got a free course over on my website, link in the description below, and let's get started. So starting here in After Effects, we're gonna come up to File, New, Maxon Cinema 4D File. Save that, and that'll launch. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D Lite. We are just gonna set up the uh, scene first. So we're gonna come over here to this render settings and change the dimensions to 1920 by 1080. And we are going to change the frame rate to 25 frames per second and we're also going to change the frame rate down here so if you don't see this window just do command D and that will bring up the project panel and you can change this to 25 as well. Now we want to create the cog and luckily enough Cinema 4D has a spline if we go to our spline menu up the top here click and hold called cog wheel perfect so let's bring that in and I just want this flipped on its back almost so first thing I'm going to do is come down to the objects tab and just flip the plane to XZ XZ sorry we're in the UK then I'm just going to add an extrude to this to give it some geometry so up to the top again extrude object click once and the cog wheel needs to be a child of that extrude. So let's just hover over. We'll see an arrow with a box. Drop that in. And there we go. We've got our cog. I'm going to rename this really quickly to cog1. Yeah, there's some handy handles on the actual, if you have the cog wheel highlighted. And we can bring the inner radius out and we can bring the outer radius in and even change the depth of the teeth. I'm going to leave it like this for now. And I am going to go down to these properties and look at the teeth and give it 10 teeth. And then maybe bring that in slightly. So that's our basic first. Oh, just moved it. So from here, we want to give it a bit of rotation. So for that, we can make sure we're on zero on the timeline. Go up to our extrude object. We can kind of do the rotation from there. Go to the heading, click add a, to add a keyframe, jump to about 50 and punch in 180 and add another keyframe there. So if we play back now, you'll see we have some easing on those keyframes. So to get rid of that, select both down here in the timeline and choose linear. And now we should have a nice even motion. Now we want this to carry on spinning after our last keyframe, which is quite simple to do in um, Cinema 4D. If we go up to window, then timeline dope sheet undo a few of these we've got a rotation here and that will bring up some new properties here we're looking at before or after the keyframes we want after of course and we want it to continue so now when we play back that cog should keep spinning at the same rate which is quite handy Next up, we are going to create our second cog, uh, which is gonna be the same size. To do that, we're just gonna click Command and drag uh, until we get this little plus icon. Drop that there, and that'll make a duplicate of that. We can rename this to, and we can't see anything at the minute because they're over the top of each other. So if we just, Take one of these handles and drag out, line that up by eye. Then we have our two cogs 
on this second one, I'm actually going to delete these keyframes because we're going to have, oh, sorry, deleted the whole thing there. Uh, I'm going to delete these keyframes because the rotation is actually going to be driven by this first cog here. So to do that, we're going to use something called set driver set driven. Um, and we can access that by going to the property that we put a keyframe on. It's this heading rotation. Control click, expressions, set driver, and then over to our second cog, the same parameter on the heading, and do expressions set driven relative. Now, if we play back, you'll see they're both moving this one, the first one driving the second one. Now, they're obviously moving in the same direction, which is not how cogs work. So let's reverse that. Um, there's a little Espresso tag has been added to our second cog. This is where we can do all sorts of stuff, but let's double click on that and it will bring up our editor. So here we have cog one rotation going into some a node called a range mapper and then going into our second cog rotation. On this range mapper we can go to the properties and just hit reverse under node there. Close down that box and that's working well. So that's the basic idea of set driver set driven and you can actually do that with any parameter that has automation. Now let's take it up a gear, excuse the pun, to add a third cog, slightly bigger, moving slightly slower attached to this second one. So if we take this second cog, holding command, click, drag, wait until you get the plus, let go, call this cog three, delete the espresso tag, because we'll recreate that, move it along on the X axis, and let's make this slightly larger. So going into our extrude object and then into our cog wheel, we're gonna look under teeth and add 20 there. So we're gonna get this second cog to drive the third cog. So if we go into the second, we are gonna to go to the heading, make sure we're back at zero on the timeline. Um, on our heading, expressions, set driver, third cog. Remember, not, try not to um, select all of them as you can select the different parameters here. We just want heading, not all of them. So it might do some crazy stuff if you have all of them going. So just heading, again, control click, expressions, set driven relative. And that should Obviously this cog's spinning far too fast and it's spinning the wrong way. So we know how to get it spinning the right way. We're gonna go into the range mapper and look down at our properties and do reverse. So that fixes that. Now to get it spinning slower, we need to half the speed. If there's 20 teeth here and there's 10 teeth here, we need to half the speed of this cog. And we can actually do that with the range mapper. We just have to do a couple more steps within the Expresso node editor to get us there. So coming out of the rotation is calculated in radians, I think, radians. And we need it to go into the range mapper as degrees so then we can do a subtraction. So there is a node for that. If you can control click, new node, espresso, um, calculate degrees, and you can see this is from radians to degrees, which is exactly what we wanna do. We're gonna take that rotation, pop it in the input, pull the output, and pop it into the range mapper, and then we need to do that, reverse that calculation from radians, from, sorry, um, degrees to radians back into the rotation. So now we're just going to command and click and drag this degree to duplicate it. I'm going to get rid of this wire. I'm going to connect the output to the input and the output to the rotation input of cog three. Just remember we've got to change reverse that calculation. So we're going to go from degrees to radians 
and then we are going to look at the parameters just within the range mapper now. So input lower should be zero, input upper should be 360, input lower should be zero, and then this should be half of 360, which is 180, and that should give us the correct speed. So if I just nudge that in now, go back to the zero, bring that in a tad, and get a better perspective on this. Obviously this is a little rough, but you can um, make the teeth a little closer if you like. But essentially that's the, that's the idea. And now just to change the speed of all of them, we have this one keyframe that will either slow the animation right down or we can speed it right up. Cool. So all I did for my example was add some materials. You can find these materials on my website, click the link below. And I added just some little rivets with a Boolean object. And there's another tutorial on that. So back in After Effects, we're just gonna render this out, changing the renderer from viewport to current and rendering it out like any other file in After Effects. Thanks for watching, I hope that was useful. If you're new to 3D and you want to learn more of the fundamentals, I've got a free course over on my website, click the link in the description below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please like and subscribe um, to these videos and I'll see you on the next one.